But happy Christmas, everyone. Um, is it just me, or has Christmas just kind of completely come out of nowhere this year? I've lost, I've lost count of the number of times I've turned to my wife and said, God, I can't believe it's already the 10th of November. It's the 20th of November. I can't believe it's the 5th of December. And now I cannot believe we are already the 24th of December. It's just flown by. I can't quite believe it. But not so for everyone. Some people have been getting ready for Christmas for quite a while. Uh, not wanting to be caught unawares, slightly like I have. So I wonder, how early have you guys started getting ready for Christmas? When, when, do you want to pop your hand up? When did you put your Christmas tree up or start putting Christmas tree decorations? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can see your hand. Yeah, yeah. When did you put them up? Just after Halloween. <laughs> wow. That's impressive. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. 10th of December. 10th of December. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, okay, yeah. Eloise? 18th, 10th, yeah, okay, Oliver last one, yeah? The 1st of December, yeah, brilliant, gosh, just after Halloween, that's impressive, <laughs> gosh. Um, okay, uh, this one might be more for the adults. When did you start buying Christmas presents? Ooh. Anyone actually remember, yeah? Any, uh, you forgot, that's fine. And anyone remember when they start buying? Yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, do you remember? Um, oh, very nice. Very nice. Sure. So, I've got a quiz for you guys. I'm going to need the clicker. Okay. And this is, uh, this is quiz, quiz is called, uh, if we can get it on the screen. Oh, yeah, there we go. When did they start selling stuff for Christmas? Okay, I've got three companies that are going to come up on the screen, and I'm going to need you to, to tell me when you think they started selling stuff for Christmas. Okay, the first one is Waitrose. Okay, does anyone want to guess when Waitrose started doing food orders, Christmas-related food orders? Anyone? Yeah, you? 1st of December, on the nose, exactly. Waitrose started doing food deliveries on the 1st of December. Okay, very good guessing. Okay, the second one is Littler's, okay? This is Littler's Butchers, which is just down the road. Okay, I'm not going to ask Will because he worked for them last year. Okay, when do you guys reckon Littler's started taking Christmas turkey orders? Yep. You say the 1st of November as well? Very close, actually. It was the end of October. Some people were putting their order in for their Christmas turkey in the last week of October, which I think is very, uh, very good forward planning. The last one I'm, I'm not quite so positive about. This is Tesco's. This was a bit controversial a while ago. Does anyone know when Tesco's started selling mince pies? Oliver, you're very keen. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, do you, do you want to go? No, it was even earlier than that when Tesco started selling mince pies. All right, anyone who hasn't guessed already? Yeah, yeah, do you want to guess? Good guess, but not quite. Not quite what I'm looking for, yes. Do you want to guess? When do you think? No, it was well earlier than December the 2nd. Okay, Eloise, the last one, yeah. Very close, actually. Tesco's started selling mince pies on the 1st of September. So early that the mince pies they were selling will go out of date before Christmas. Well into October, actually. We get nuts about getting, getting ready for Christmas. As we've seen, um, some people are getting ready months in advance. But there are some people in the Bible who blow that clear out of the water. They weren't getting ready for that first Christmas, months in advance, not even years in advance. They were getting ready for that first Christmas hundreds of years in advance. 
See that first reading that we had, uh, read by Thomas, from the book of Isaiah, was written about 700 years before Jesus was born. And it talks about someone being born of a virgin, and he would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. 700 years before Jesus was born, that was written. And tonight, I want to draw your attention to another little prophecy which talks about Jesus, um, which foretells about his coming. Now, I'm going to put the verse up on the screen, and I want you to have your, your listening ears on as I read it, so that you can tell me which part of the Christmas story this might be talking about. Okay? There we go. May the kings of Tarshish and of distant shores bring tribute to him. May the kings of Sheba and Seba present gifts. May all kings bow down to him and all nations serve him. Does anyone recognize where that comes from? Any of the characters? Yeah, 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 do you wanna guess? It is, exactly. This is the three kings coming um, to visit Jesus. Matthew tells us of three kings. Well, I don't know if it's three kings. It tells us of kings that come from the east, bringing gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to baby Jesus. And this, these verses come from Psalm 72, <coughs> um, which is a wonderful psalm that I love. And it has a little bit more to tell us about that little baby who came, who these wise men came to see. So if you've got a Bible, this might be helpful for you. Um, I'm going to be reading Psalm 72. You might want to read Psalm 72 as well. Um, I don't know what page it's on, um, but uh, if you'd like to read with me, I'm going to read through Psalm 72. Um, I'll ask Sarah at the on the front if she can find it. Well, Page 585 on your pew Bibles, if you would like to read, read along with me. Right? Psalm 72. Okay, and just listen um, as I read this. Oh, no, hang on. I need to tell you a little bit about it first. Getting lost with my pages. Okay, so the first thing to note, is anyone, has anyone got it open? Psalm 72. Can anyone tell me who wrote this psalm? So is it right at the very top? Yeah? Solomon. Brilliant. King Solomon wrote this psalm, um, the wisest man on earth, which means that this psalm was probably written about 960 BC, okay? 960 years before Jesus was born. And to tell you what this psalm is roughly about, okay, it's a psalm that was written by Solomon as a prayer. A prayer for the people of Israel to pray to God when they're going to have a new king. It's the kind of things they're supposed to ask God for in a new king. You might see the link with Christmas, I don't know. Um, so I'm going to read it, um, and on me on the screen are going to come up some of the things that, that uh, Solomon prays that this king would either be or do. Ooh. And um, I apologise, there's a lot of text and it's going to be quite small, so I apologise if you can't see it very clearly, but do just listen in to the kind of things that Solomon wants this king to be. So, Psalm 72. Endow the king with your justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness. May he judge your people in righteousness, your afflicted ones with justice. May the mountains bring prosperity to the people and the hills the fruit of righteousness. May he defend the afflicted among the people and save the children of the needy. May he crush the oppressor. May he endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon through all generations May he be like the rain falling on a mown field, like showers watering the earth. In his days, may the righteous flourish and prosperity abound till the moon is no more. May he rule from sea to sea 
and from the river to the ends of the earth. May the desert tribes bow before him and his enemies lick the dust. May the kings of Tarshish and of distant shores bring tribute to him. May the kings of Sheba and Seba present him gifts. May, the king, may all kings bow down to him and all nations serve him. For he will deliver the needy who cry out, the afflicted who have no one to help. He will take pity on the weak and the needy and save the needy from death. He will rescue them from oppression and violence because precious is their blood in his sight. Long may he live. May gold from Sheba be given to him. May people pray for him and bless him all day long. May grain abound throughout the land. On the tops of the hills may it sway. May the crops flourish like Lebanon and thrive on the grass of the field. May his name endure forever. May it continue as long as the sun. And all nations we bless through him and they will call him blessed. Praise be to the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does marvellous deeds. Praise be to his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Whew, that was a bit of a long reading. I apologise for that. It's hot and stuffy in here. So I apologise if you're nodding off a little. But wowie, as we read through that, wouldn't it be great to have a king who does all these things? In, in a moment when, I don't want to you know, say this too quickly, but in a moment where all of our political leaders seem to, seem to suck, wouldn't this be a breath of fresh air to have someone who does these sorts of things? But at the same time, isn't it such a high bar? Who on earth could do all of these things? Who could live up to that? Be all that blessing for all of his reign, for everyone? Who could care for each individual person in his kingdom? Even though he's, he's reigning from shore to shore and he's reigning forever, how could anyone live up to that bar? What was King Solomon thinking when he wrote this prayer? But these wise men, when they come and they bring their gifts to this baby, they think that they have found this very king who will do all of this. They came to visit baby Jesus in that lowly stable because this baby king was different. Remember what Isaiah said about him some 250 years later, that this son, born of a virgin, would be called Emmanuel, God with us. Because ultimately, who could live up to that standard but God himself? And this is the wonderful news of Christmas. That the baby, that child, was born King, King Jesus, the Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary, King whose reign will look like this. What awesome news. And that is the wonderful news of Christmas. If you know this Jesus, why not spend some time in Psalm 72 over the next week or so, just reading through it and seeing more of Jesus. But if you don't, if you are not familiar with who Jesus is, then this is who we believe in as Christians. This is who we worship. This is our saviour and this is our king. So if you're curious, why don't come along and find out some more. For this is the wonderful news of Christmas, the birth of our wonderful, rescuing, saving, forever King. Amen.